to rock your world. He's going to meet you in his word, and you're going to love today. Like the, uh, the ushers down there coming through, if you didn't get notes and you want to make sure uh, that you are ready to capture what God talks to you about, this is your chance. Uh, if you are digital in your persuasion, go ahead and open up your phone. Only if you promise not to Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, or anything else. Watch them scores. If you're that, then Jesus is going to send a lightning bolt through your phone and fry it. Just, I've asked him for some, gr- I'm just kidding. But if whatever you capture God's voice to you, go ahead and get ready to do that because we're talking about specifically that, the way God speaks to us today. <clears throat> we started this series uh, last week called Frequency and really is the fact that God talks to us and how he talks to us and why he talks to us. And today we're going to keep moving forward with that. And uh, last week we actually started with the issue that God does talk and he talks to us individually. We noticed that Jesus gives us this story in John chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. I'll read a portion of it. He's using himself, uh, using an illustration of shepherd and sheep to illustrate who he is as Jesus, our Savior, and who we are as his followers. He said he's the shepherd, we're the sheep. And that's the picture he he draws. And he says it this way. Watchman opens the gate for for the shepherd, and the the sheep listen to his voice. And this is the part I want you to hear today. He, being the shepherd, calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. This is the picture that I want you to hear today. In fact, I'm asking God to talk to you today in a way that you recognize and, and sense his voice to you. But the scripture we, we see here is very personal in, this, in, the, in the sense that God did not send a group text to humanity with a generic message. He literally says, I'm talking to you. I call you by name. Does that make sense? So he might be saying, Robert, this is what I want for you. And Howard, this is what I need you to do. And Obi, this is what I need you to do. And Omar, this is what I need you to do. And on and on and on we go through the idea. But a lot of times we think of God speaking to us, and it's very very general in the sense of God's talking to humanity. And he does have a message for humanity captured in his word, but the Bible's very clear that he's speaking to us. Today is what we're going to be working on. And I'm asking that God would actually really uh, give you an impression that you can sense is coming from him. So we're going to start by talking about why does God speak to us, and then some of the ways God speaks to us, and what does he say? Why does he speak to us, and what's he say to us? The first thing I want to point out is that God is very relational in the context of who he reveals himself to be to us. Listen to the way we see this message come. This is really through an angel who was giving this message. And he said, the virgin, which is Mary, will be with child, which is Jesus, and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. In other words, his name is Jesus, but they're going to nickname him something else. They're going to nickname him Emmanuel. It's another name for him that people associate with him, but it has a different, it has a meaning to it. We do that with each other. Uh, I was named after my father. My dad was David Eugene Wright the first, and my name is David Eugene Wright the second. So I'm kind of a mini, my dad. I'm his mini me, if you will. Well, they called him Dave. And so because I'm the mini, they called me Davey. So my name is David, but they nicknamed named me Davey because I'm the mini of my dad. Does that make sense? So that's the context that we see here, that Jesus has a name, Yeshua or Jesus. But they actually referred to him as Emmanuel, which means God with us. In other words, they wanted him to know, they wanted everyone to know with that nickname, God's not distant, far away, angry, shouting and hollering and all of those things. He's here. Does that make sense? He wants you to know that's, that's who he is. And he's not just here to walk around and judge us. He's here to, he's here to engage us. Everything with God is relationship. And so what we're going to do is is walk walk our way through this. The first thing God does when he speaks to us is he speaks to us to facilitate friendship. Write that down. He's speaking to us to facilitate friendship or relationship. Relationship. And I'm covering this with you for a few reasons today, one of which is that there are teachings in some strains or some streams of the body of Christ that emphasize a a distortion of this idea, and they say that God is no longer speaking individually to people. He only has given us his Bible. And if you want to hear God, the only way you can get to his voice is just read his Bible. And I want to be clear, his Bible is his voice. But he's speaking to people today. Does that make sense? And we'll talk a little bit about next week about how we use the voice of his Bible to clarify and make sure that the voice we're hearing is actually his voice. We'll talk about that next week. 
But for today, I want you to understand that he's doing this to, in part to facilitate friendship or relationship. Let me impress upon you something this morning that this is a bigger deal than people think. Because <clears throat> at some point, you'll breathe your last breath and you'll step into a, another dimension called eternity, which is already transecting timeline as we know it now. So ta- the, the life we live and eternity are connected together in ways we, it's hard for us to understand. But the bottom line is this. When you stand before Jesus to give an account to him, Jesus was very clear in Matthew chapter 7. If it's been a while since you've read it, go read it. But he says, there's going to be people that stand before me on that day, and they'll say all the Christian things. They'll call me Lord. They will have prophesied in my name. They'll have cast out demons. They'll have done all kind of miracles. In other words, they'll have done all the things that everybody would say, that person's a Christian. I'll tell them we didn't know each other. It's, you're not coming in. And I don't want to be overly dramatic and try to to be something that I'm not this morning, but I do want to impress upon you today that the reality is this relationship is paramount. So to me, hearing the voice of God is not a convenience. This is how I follow him. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you got to turn from your twisted ways. Repent, turn, and then come follow me. How do I follow him? I'm going to follow him by his voice. His voice is going to be correlating with his word. We'll talk about it again uh, next week. But my point is, the friendship or the relationship is important. God is not going to say, welcome to heaven. You, you executed Christianity flawlessly. You received communion every time I said to. You were sweet to little old ladies. You quit stealing. You quit beating your husband up. You know, you quit doing all these things. <laughs> like some of you ladies are tough. You shouldn't beat your husband up. And men, you shouldn't beat your wife. We shouldn't be beating each other up. So if you're beating each other up, stop it in Jesus' name. That was only in this service. So I don't know who's, or maybe you're out there, you villain. Quit beating people. And we laugh a little bit, but the, the truth is, God is saying that I don't measure our rightness based on your behavior. Our rightness is a relationship. I paid for it, Jesus is saying, with his own life and his own blood. I paid for it, but the relationship is the point. And part of that relationship is my voice. I want you to key in on this. And so as a, as a church, we believe and teach God actively speaking to people God doesn't have a speaking problem. We have a hearing problem. And that's what we're keying in on today. Why? Because I don't want to get to heaven and hear Jesus say, you did, you preached good. You looked good. You sounded pretty Christian, but we didn't know each other. There is that big possibility for every person who's breathing. I don't want that to be my eventuality. So for me, I'm honing in on this voice thing. Why? Because that's how the relationship works. All right? So God speaks to facilitate friendship. God speaks to give us guidance. Guidance. How many of you want God to guide you? Can I just see your hand this morning? Honestly, you want God to guide you? We, we, we really think that that's what we want until we realize that that means something different than most of us think. Guidance means I'm going to call, I'm going to direct you a place you weren't going to begin with. I'm going to tell you to stop doing some things you're doing. I'm going to tell you to start doing some things you aren't doing. Does that make sense? I'm going to guide you, which means you weren't already going to do this. Most of the time we, when we say, I want God to guide me, what we really want is God to bless us. But would you make what I'm doing good? But when he, when he guides us, he only puts the input in for things we either don't know, we're, we're ignorant of, and he's going to say, you don't know what you're doing, so let me tell you how this works. Or you're rebellious, you want to do something, you're going to go do it, but I'm telling you, don't do that, because there's a problem with that idea. Even though it looks appealing to you now, there's, that's a dead end street. That, that sin is a trap. So I'm going to tell you not to do that. So guidance means I'm going to... I'm going to tell you to start doing some things and stop doing some things because you weren't stopping and starting them on your own. That's what guidance actually means. And truthfully, guys, we actually want this. But we're conflicted because we want other things too. So God says, listen to my voice. I'm going to guide you. The third thing is God speaks to give us perspective. So he speaks to facilitate friendship. He speaks to give us guidance. And he also speaks to provide perspective. There are things happening right now that we cannot and do not see the way God sees it. 
the way that God sees it. <clears throat> right now, uh, for those of you that are, have been around LifeLink a little while, you know that Cherie is my wife. Uh, you may know that uh, Lacey's our daughter and, and that she married James, who is our son-in-law, and, and they've given us a grandchild named Emma, and another one's on the way named Nova Joy. And so, so you may know some of these things. What you may not know is Emma, our first grandchild, is actually afraid of me. So whenever Pop shows up, she just shrinks back. It's terrible. I want to be the favorite, but apparently right now I'm the one everybody's scared of. So anyway, we got a clue the other day when she said either to Cherie or Lacey, he's tall. And I got to thinking of it, you know, her head's about here. I, maybe I do look like a monster to her, you know? I've never looked up at me from down like that. How many of you have ever done this? How many of you have dogs or cats? See, the dog people put their hand up right away. The cats are like, nah, I'm not sure I can admit this. <laughs> Just for fun, get, put your head about where a dog's head is in your house and look at your house from that perspective. It looks altogether different. But you're tall. You can see things. God is saying, listen, I'm, I'm giving you some guidance based on things I see that you can't see. You think you want to go down that path. You think you want to do that. You think you want to date that. You think you want to go there. You think you want that type of entertainment. You think you want this experience or that pleasure. You think that's what you want. But I know what's down the street from there that you can't see. So I'm going to say don't do that. Instead, do this. You're going to go, I don't want to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say, that's a dead end street. That's going to burn you. This is, going to, this is what you're looking for. Yeah, but it doesn't look good. And spinach doesn't look good to a two-year-old either. But we know you really need the nutrition. And ice cream and macaroni and cheese taste good, but they don't do a thing for you. So plug your arteries. Perspective. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we, walk, we who follow God actually have to walk by faith, not by sight. What's faith mean? That means there's a dimension of my, cho my choices that are tied directly to what I'm sensing God saying to me. So what I'm hearing is taking precedent over the, what I, my evaluation of my circumstance. To say it another way, I'm going to prioritize listening over looking. Why? Because... There's something bigger going on than what I see. God sees it, and if I do what he says, I'm going to be fine through it. I heard a funny story about this uh, that illustrates this. I was listening to a pastor talk about the dynamics that go with listening to the voice of God. He used this illustration. I thought it was kind of funny. That <clears throat> there's a, a college basketball t uh, a football team called the Wisconsin Badgers, and they were playing a terribly embarrassing game. They were fumbling, and they were intercepting, and they were, couldn't pass to save their life and couldn't run a ball, and every, it was just a mess, and it's like the, the score was horrible. It was an embarrassment. It was that kind of thing, but they were real confused because their fans kept cheering. Like, they'd throw an interception, and the fans would go, Wah! It's like, wait, whose side are you on? Later, they found out that the Milwaukee Brewers were, were actually blowing their, their, they were playing a baseball team. Uh, in a baseball, in a, uh, in, uh, the, the <laughs> baseball, NB, is that N, M, what is it? Y'all see how good I am? I got you right back in. You were like, no, 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 that's not it, that's not it. But I just want to make sure you're listening. So, oh, yeah, I'm that good. Y'all think I stutter up here, don't you? It's called good, baby. I'm good. Point is, they were listening to the Brewers, and the Brewers were blowing their opponent away. And it's like every pitch, like, bam, there's a single, bam, there's a triple, like, ah! And the people watching the Badgers had their earbuds in. <laughs> so what was confusing the football players is they would, th they would do a bad, they were getting defeated. Their fans were cheering, but it was because they were responding to what they were listening to, not what they were seeing. What we're, what I'm, the, the illustration points to the fact it's possible to respond to victory that comes from God while your eyes or circumstances look like defeat, but that's not the end of the story yet. So walk your way through based on what God's telling you. Stay in the game, stay in the game, stay in the game. Stay with it. Why? Because that's how you walk by faith. 
What's God saying? What's God saying? So he speaks to, to facilitate friendship. He speaks to provide guidance. And he speaks to provide perspective. James, tell us to give me about six or eight more minutes, okay? Wherever Leslie's at. I want us to catch this, you guys, and I'm trying not to hurry through this message because it's really important. The voice of God is an enormously, centrally important part of following him. It is the difference between religion and relationship. Jesus was absolutely set against religion. It was all about relationship. So I do hope that you understand this morning as we're going through frequency that God's voice, hearing God's voice, today is learning why God speaks, the fact that he does speak, why God speaks, and what does he say? Because the truth of it is, we may actually get all kinds of impressions that sound maybe religious or noble or whatever, or misguided or whatever. We may get all kinds of senses of things or voices we hear that may or may not be God. And so we're going to talk about how to identify that next week. But for today, my hope is to lean you in on the fact that, God, I actually want to hear you speak. It's important. I want the friendship. I want the guidance. And I want that perspective. The whispers of God is what I want to shift to now because of all the different ways God talks to us, and he does talk through several different types of communica communication approaches that he uses to get our attention and give us messages. One of the ways he speaks most commonly is something we call the still small voice of God or the whisper of God. And it really comes from an Old Testament part, uh, a, a snapshot that happened in the Old Testament. And really, this is God talking to the prophet Elijah. And he said, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11, he says, the Lord said to, the, to Elijah, go and stand out on the mountain in, the, in my presence because I'm about to actually pass by. And he's basically saying, I'm going to show you how this works. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. In other words, just because it was big and boisterous or big and painful or crisis or just something big and powerful looking doesn't mean that's actually the voice of God speaking to you. That's the, that's the corollary. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord's voice or the Lord was not in the earthquake. In other words, that wasn't him causing that either in the sense of trying to communicate. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And then after the fire came a gentle whisper. And God was basically saying, listen, you're going to see lots of big types of stuff, but that's probably not my voice speaking to you. And I want you to know that the still small voice, as it says in one translation, is real. It, to, be, to be blunt in, in contemporary language is really an impression we sense on the inside. And you've probably sensed this before and heard this before. I'll give you an illustration. <clears throat> How many of you have ever been through something you thought was going to be exciting, and then something unfortunate happened, and on the other side of it, when you look back, you just, and you heard yourself say this, I knew that was going to happen. Ever heard that? You know what that was? That's the, that's the tension of these two big ideas. You were excited about one thing, but there was this little nag on there. There's a little something that you knew, but you thought, no, 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 no. But then something, no, no, then it happened. It's like, I knew it. That was an impression you had in your knower. And in many cases, that's God actually talking to you, saying, don't do that. I know that you think that's what you want. That's not what you want. Don't go there. Don't say that. What's he, what's he doing? He's speaking to you in a still small voice. It comes like an impression that's something we get down in our knower. So when you, you have an impression in your knower, and, and I will say, this takes a little a bit of time with working with God and his Bible and, and, and learning how to do this. But the bottom line is that's, that's where he speaks. He doesn't necessarily come up behind you and whisper into your ears like, like you know, your friend would come up and go, hey, dude, what's up? It's, it, it really happens more in your knower. Fair enough? So that's the whispers of God. So what does he whisper to us? How do we know it's him? Let's talk about some of the things that he does say to us so we can start learning how to recognize when it's him or when it's other voices that speak. Because, guys, we do have lots of impressions. How many of you know, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because you're like, oh, I can't raise my hand. They're going to put me in the white coat. <laughs> but you get impressions all the time. 
You get impressions all the time. And we will learn how to, to, to narrow in on, is that God saying that or is this my idea or is that really darkness talking to me? So here's one of the things. You need to know the types of things God says. Well, one of the things, write this down, is he whispers encouragement to us. He whispers encouragement to us. God's not angrily yelling, screaming, venomous threats at you from heaven. He's, he's whispering encouragement to you. Now, your spiritual adversary, Satan, his demons, dark forces, that's the voices you hear in your mind that says you're a pathetic loser, you're a this, you're a rotten sinner, you're a... That, that's never the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit says something like this. Romans 8, 16 says, the Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our heart and tells us that what? We're God's children. What's he saying? I'm going to come alongside of you. It's like, yeah, that, hey, that was a really boneheaded thing you just did, but I want you to know you're my kid. See, we associate behavior with our rightness with God because that's a religious idea. God sees our behavior, but he's actually committed to what we are, who we are as he created us. Our identity in him and the relationship we have with him is really where our rightness with him is centered. The behavior, that will change the more we get to know him and the stronger our relationship becomes with him. Does that make sense? So when we love God and he says, hey, I want you to stop doing that, you say, well, because I love you and because you love me, I'm going to quit doing that. So your behavior changes, but it's based on the strength of that relationship. It's not so, so that you can prove your rightness to God. If you've, many of you have raised children and you have the experience of watching your kid in ultimate defiance, you know, telling you no and, you know, all those other things when they're three or when they're 15, I hate you or, you know, all those other things that, that we say. And perhaps you're saying that in your mind to your parents and you're 50 and they're 70 and you're like, oh, you're a pain in my neck. You know, I have no idea what you're saying upstream, you know, in the generations. But the bottom line is we all know that children often behave differently than we know they need to behave because that behavior is not good for them. Does that make sense? But because we're parents, and wise parents do this, and if this is not how you, op how you respond, take notes on this. In fact, if you're taking notes, be sure to write, this is not a feeling, but write this down. In fact, if you're not taking notes, write this down. <laughs> you want to know this one. When your child misbehaves, the, the general phrase you want to communicate is, you know, that behavior is unacceptable. Then follow it with, you are better than that. That, what you chose was not, it's not going to work. That's, um, that's unacceptable. You are better than that. You're my son. You're my daughter. You're my child. We're good. Now that behavior, no. Because they're not their behavior. They're your son. They're your daughter. And when they sense that, ultimately the behavior stuff starts working itself out with prayer and biblical guidance and biblical parenting. And by, by the way, all of you need Growing Kids God's Way, which we're going to do this fall. Make sure you make sure we're doing this. You all need biblical parenting. Even if you're 80, you need biblical parenting. <laughs> Get the iPads out of their face and actively parent them for a while. They're going to need it. I just want to encourage you because that's what God says. He whispers encouragement. So let me give you a little encouragement with that. You guys still good? All right. The second thing he whispers is warning. God whispers warnings to us. He'll whisper warnings. We see in the scripture that sometimes things look normal or they even look noble or right, but God will whisper and say, nope, it's not time for that. Nope, don't do that. In fact, we see here in Acts chapter 16, verse 67, the church leaders were moving from city to city to preach and teach, and yet they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. And when they'd become, to, and, and after they had, had come to Mysia, uh, Mysia, they tried to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them to do that either. What do we see? We see the picture of preachers going from one town to the next with the message of the gospel. You would think God wanted that message preached everywhere, but God sees things that we don't see and they say, stop, it's not time for that yet. You're, now you're going to face persecution when you go to that city, so, but it's not time for that now, so don't go to that city yet. I've got another plan for you, how to get the message there. I want you to do this, I want you to do that. But we, we see the picture, and this, this phrase is not in the Bible, but we'll, you'll hear people, it's kind of Christianese, they'll say, I had a check in my spirit about that. That's basically God clearing his throat, like, 
You know, when your mom cocked her eyebrow up at you or your dad kind of rolled his shoulder, you know, whatever it was in your home and you knew, uh, don't do that. That's God clearing his throat like, <clears throat> hold on. What is that? That's that, that hesitation, that pause. That's God trying to say, warning. I know you think you want that. I know that makes sense to you, but don't do that. Don't say that. Don't date there. Don't sleep with that. You know, whatever it is that I have no idea what your that is, but stop that and do this instead. What's he saying? Warning. That's what God does. He'll whisper those kinds of things. By the way, let me just put a shameless plug in for two classes we're offering tonight because this is actually a big part of this. One is we call Fresh Start 3. Fresh Start 3 is a class dedicated to unpacking the power and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Five o'clock with dinner and child care provided, we're going to spend about an hour together. And you'll leave that class with a much more comprehensive understanding of the ministry and the power of the Holy Spirit. Those of you that would like to receive the ministry of the, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit will have a, a season of prayer ministry for that too. But LifeLink is a spirit-filled, spirit-led church, which means our ear is always open. God, what are you saying? Why? Because what, the very things we're talking about today. Finally, he whispers direction. Encouragement, he whispers warnings. He also whispers directions. Let's do this, let's don't do that. We see uh, examples of this in scripture. They're there in your notes. Let me just move on for the sake of time. The final thing is he whispers dreams. Dreams. He whispers dreams to us. And really this comes on two layers. Uh, in two different places in scripture, it points this out. I'll, I'll mention this today. That the Bible is very clear that God is the one who puts thoughts and desires and intentions in our hearts. There are things that really are given to us that are desires that really come from who God's created us to be. They match our shape. Those desires come from God, and that's part of the way he speaks to guide us in what seasons of our lives look like, which is another reason why I'd like to suggest those of you that have, it's, maybe it's been a while since you've been through Growth Track Step 3, you should come back through it tonight. If you've never been through Growth Track 3 and LifeLink is appealing to you in some way, or shape, or form, you may think perhaps this is part of God's plan for your future. Tonight, of all the growth tracks, this is the one that's the most fun anyway. There's dinner, child care, it's all free. Five o'clock. But we talk about, let's, let's talk about your personality that God gave you. We have a fun test for that, a fun test for your spiritual gifts. Talk about how your passion points and what your pain points are. How to put all that with your experience and look at the divine shape God gave you. So you know where you fit in the family of God. Why? Because if you fit in the family of God with an understanding of purpose, then you're actually following God. You're following his plan. So you have a place in the family. You also have a place of influence in the earth. You have a ministry in the church and a mission in the world. And all those are big ideas that we talk about in step three. Why, Pastor say, why do you keep talking about growth track all the time? Because LifeLink Church is here to help you get to eternity in good shape with Jesus. Jesus called LifeLink to help link people and God together for life. So we're going to talk about the heart behind how God works. We're talking about that a lot today. But we're also going to give you practical steps so you know how to follow him into what he's called you to be because it doesn't do you good to just know God loves me. But if you don't know how to actually follow him, we're not helping you with that either. So we're going to help you with your heart and we're going to help you with your steps too. I'd love to ask you to consider coming back to Growth Track Step 3. You get connected with some friends and learn how to do life together. It's going to be a lot of fun. No strings attached. You don't have to, you're not signing up for anything. It's just our way of equipping you for that if that's the season for you. But the second thing is God actually does use dreams and visions. And that's really what I wanted to point to in the, in the scripture here. The, the Bible says in Job chapter 33, verses 14, the first part of 15, God speaks again and again and again, though people don't recognize it. A lot of times he'll speak in dreams and visions of the night. Sometimes the dreams God gives you really are messages God's trying to get through to you. Perhaps most of the time it's, acid reflux driven by bad pizza that you had too much of with your milk and whatever else and sometimes your brain is just trying to process weird stimuli from your esophagus <laughs> but God does from time to time actually speak to you in dreams sometimes he speaks to you in visions again you need to know how to filter all that and that's what next week's all about the practical filter how do we make sure that we're not responding to a Pete's dream and how do we know that that's you know because God listen <laughs> you're going to get all kind of impressions but I actually had a guy, this is way out there, and you'll laugh when you hear this, but this will show you how, how gullible we are when it comes to trying to discern the voice of God. I literally had a man years and years ago at another church, we, we were a part of the ministry team, It came to me and said, Pastor Dave, 
I, God's telling me I'm supposed to marry this woman over here. And I said, really? How do you know that? He said, because we went on a date, had great sex. And, uh, and God said, that's the one to marry. <laughs> like, okay, I know that wasn't God. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's a different spirit you're listening to, and it's not the Holy Spirit. And their marriage didn't make it either. And so my, my point is, you guys, we're all gullible to, to those impressions. And if we don't know how to filter those and whatnot, we can get in trouble. But the bottom line is that doesn't mean they're not real either. It's just learning how to hear God. And really when it comes right down to it, they're, they're, the, the, the part that's important are really the last two things. And they, these are really attitudes. Write these down. Number one, if I'm going to actually hear God and learn how to recognize his voice, I'm going to have to be open to hear him. In other words, I'm going to have to want to hear him. I, I want to hear God. I mean, a lot of times people go to church but don't want to hear God because they know as soon as they open their ear to God, he's going to say, stop doing that. Start doing that. Quit living that way. Start living this way. So a lot of times we may be resistant to hearing God, but I'm telling you, if you turn the voice of God off, you're in danger. Instead, desire to hear him. Desire to hear him. Had the same attitude that Eli uh, told Samuel to have when he said, listen, when you hear that voice again, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I want to hear that voice. And then the second attitude is really captured in this phrase, I'm eager to respond. So I'm open to hear and I'm eager to respond. Lord, whatever you say, I'm going to go for it. Why? Because the Bible says, Jesus said in the Bible, my sheep listen to my voice. They're open to hear it. We have a relationship. I know them because they're listening and they follow me. Again, they follow me. What's he saying? My, my voice is a part of this. They know my voice. I know them because they recognize my voice and they follow. We've got a relationship. So as we're moving our way through this message series this morning, my hope is this, that you would simply be open to the idea God's real, he's big, he talks, it's possible to hear his voice, to sense it and follow it. More than possible, it's ultimately desirable. And my hope is this morning that you would allow the Holy Spirit to prime the pump of your desire. God, I wanna hear that voice. What's gonna be involved? Obviously prayer will be involved in that, scripture's gonna be involved in that, some of the spiritual disciplines, why? Because I gotta learn what your voice sounds like, but ultimately I wanna hear it. Why? Because your voice will lead me into the very best path for me. Fair enough? So we're going to pause where we are in the journey. Next week, we'll talk about the four or five filters that we can use to identify that's God's voice, that's not God's voice. That's God's voice, that's not God's voice. We're going to talk about that very practically. Today is the heart for it. So let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your faithfulness. You are a good God. Lord, as a group of people, uh, some of us call Life League home, others of us are visiting through, and some in from out of town to visit family and friends, and others searching, and, but yet all of us ended up in this room today to hear, those who are streaming online, to hear what you're saying to us, and providentially, God, you aligned our, our lives to hear this message, that you speak to people. So today, God, we open our hearts to that. We want that. So thank you, Lord, for, for being so good to us. You know, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, please, no one moving around, please stay right where you are. There will be about two or three dozen people make some big decisions in the next 90 seconds. Please don't be the one that causes them to be distracted. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to just say that in about 60 seconds, I'm going to pray a life change prayer. And I'm going to give your mouth words to say that your heart's already saying. But here's how I want you to to envision this. Ask yourself this question. Do I consider Jesus and what he says to me about whatever I'm about to do? Do I actually consider his relation, my relationship with him when I'm about to respond to my parents, when I'm about to respond to my employer, when I'm about to discipline or direct a, an employee, when I'm about to sit down and figure out what to do with my time, when I'm going to decide whether I'm going to play video games, when I'm going to do my homework, when I decide if I'm going to pay my bills or do Instagram, when I decide what to wear, who to go with, what type of entertainment, when I decide all those things, do I ever consider, Jesus, what would you like for me to do here? How would you like for me to respond? 
What's the choice to make? The reason I'm saying it that way is if Jesus is not in the active role of guiding your life, then you may know some things about Jesus, but if you're not following him, he's not your shepherd. He's your shepherd if you follow him. And following is is a decision to admit, I wasn't, I recognize it, so now I'm choosing to turn from what I used to do, and I'm gonna start following Jesus. I don't know how to do it yet, but in my heart, I'm turning. That's called a decision. And in a moment, I'm gonna say a prayer. I'd love to ask you to join me in that prayer. The reality is many of us in here today look pretty good on the outside, but the answer to that question is nope, I'll pretty much just do what I, I wanna do. I don't, even, I don't usually think about that. Then I'm gonna say Jesus wants to take you on a journey, freshen up that relationship. Some of you need a fresh start with Jesus. Others of you need a start with Jesus. You've never actually had him in that role. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I'm gonna ask that you answer that question in your heart. Do you need a start with Jesus or a fresh start with Jesus? And if so, I'd like to ask you to join with everybody else. Let's all say this prayer together. Heavenly Father, come on out loud. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me enough to give me the truth of your word. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross, giving your sinless life to pay for my sins. I'm asking you to forgive me for every sin I've ever committed against you or anyone else. Wash me, cleanse me, make me brand new. Today, I'm deciding to turn my life completely over to you. Come into my heart, lead me forward as my only God and my true Savior. Because today, I've decided to follow you. No turning back. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, can we just give the Lord a great big praise today? Thank you for watching the LifeLink Church video podcast. It is our prayer that you heard a word from God today. If you have a story to share about how God is working in your life, then let us know and send us an email at mystory@lifelinkchurch.com. At